Welcome back to GB Guns. We're out today with the Magnum Research Mountain Eagle in Nosler 28 caliber. This thing is a beast. And this is going to be a fun review. So those of you that saw the tabletop know that I've got this beautiful thing in for a magazine article, but thought I'd bring the cameras for some of it to bring you along. This is by Magnum Research. It's their Mountain Eagle line, which gives you the option for custom rifle builds. In this case, we've got a Defiance Action on here. Beautiful stainless with a bolt that is silky smooth and beautifully fluted. BSF carbon fiber barrel on there. Magnum Research's own brake that helps quite a bit in combination with this padding on the stock. This round is 185 grain and we just chronored it at 2,994 feet per second. That's putting out some massive energy. And as I mentioned on the tabletop, when I shot this exact rifle at our Reading event in October, we were ringing 12 inch steel at a thousand yards in 30 to 40 mile an hour winds with not a care at all about the wind because this bullet just freight trained through it and Magnum Research has put together a very accurate combination of action barrel and chassis. We're running a red on optics scope on here using worn mounts because at 250 to $4 a shot you don't leave anything to chance. We've got some targets set up at 100 yards. Gonna do grouping out there. Tia and I will group separately because this is an, for an article that I'm writing. But like I said, we wanted to uh, bring you along and show you what it's like. So we've got our right on 6 to 24 by 50 zeroed. Big thanks to Warren Scope Mounts. Uh, as I mentioned, we went with Warren Rings for this. And uh, when getting it set up, they gave us a quick in the shop zero using a pretty cool tool that saved us quite a few of these expensive rounds. We only have the one load to group and since this is for an article T and I are going to group separately but I think we're going to shoot more than one group of the same load and we'll see how it does. Um, this is the Nosler 185 grain. Advertised velocity is 29.50. We chronoed an average of 29.94 which means the advertised energy of 3,574 foot-pounds is a little bit lower than what we're actually getting out of this gun. This thing is a beast, but uh, we'll show you what it looks like grouping as far as recoil and how the system was set up. And then of course, show you our groups. So the BSF website says this barrel actually increases accuracy as it gets hotter. We've got it warm, but it's still very handleable thanks to that insulative properties they have set up so on the outside it doesn't feel hot but what shooting this round i'm pretty sure there's some heat so as you might have seen there this recoil is not terrible and the action is very very smooth and the pressure is gonna build because those first two shots were great. <laughs> I pulled that, uh, I felt it. it slipped on me just before. The image through this right on, which is pretty bright and clear scope, is a little hazy, not because of the scope, but because it's December in Oregon and we've got a lot of fog and mist out there. You know, for a round that delivers 12 gauge slug energy at 600 yards, 
in the shoulder, this is much more comfortable to shoot than a 12 gauge. Not my best shooting moment. Let's see how Tia does. around as this is it is pretty impressive um, how manageable the recoil is but I don't think I'm the one managing it I think that <laughs> it's the way this this gun is built So here's how we did, and Tia is going to explain why there's so many groups. Well, there's so many groups because Graham and I were taking turns. Um, this was his first group when the barrel was coolest, um, when we started our nozzler groupings. Not too bad. And then this was my group. A couple different variables. The barrel was hotter, and I had to change iPro to work with the scope. Um, but we thought maybe the barrel was heating up a little bit too much here, so we gave it a break. No, we didn't. And thought that since Graham started with a cold barrel for first shots, I would take a turn and see if it, having a cooler barrel um, didn't improve my grouping, and it did. I threw a couple of them, but those two were touching, and the rest stayed up here. Now Graham's taking a turn with a warmer barrel, and it opened up a little bit. Um, not as much as mine did up here, but it, it, it did have an effect, it seems, with the barrel being a little bit warmer. So then trying it um, one more time to see if there is any basis behind this. Now keep in mind, the barrel manufacturer said accuracy increases with heat uh, just due to the way BSF does their carbon fiber process. So with the barrel having an external temperature of 117 degrees, which no, is not very hot, but if you look into BSF barrels, you'll see that there's actually air gaps in there. So what you feel on the outside of the barrel is not the temp on the inside. But I shot this last group here with the barrel hot. And as you can see, not too bad. Definitely a flyer there. These are one inch squares. And then just for the heck of it, we have some Hornady of unknown bullet weight. Now these are factory seconds that Hornady was graceful enough to uh, pass on to us for use in zeroings and, and just to get some rounds through it before we got into the high stuff. I think what we're gonna try to do is find a different bullet weight. The nozzle that we have is 185 grain. There's quite a range in bullet weights for this caliber because obviously there's lots of room for a big bullet. So, our accuracy part is not concluded and to get the full story, you'll have to wait for the article on that. This is just kind of the ride along YouTube video. This rifle, however, Tia, what do you think about it? 
This rifle is a Cadillac to shoot. It's like an old Cadillac. It's big, but it's not too heavy, and it's smooth. The action just rides in and out um, so easily. Um, what I appreciated about this was that because it takes me a little bit longer to get on target, that there is an external safety. Um, so for to be able to set that round in there, take my time getting my target, um, it was amazing. Yeah. My only negative is that this could use a little bit more padding for me because I just don't have quite enough shoulder to hold it down although it's not coming back it, it does give a little bit of a raise and i've i'll have rosy cheeks for a couple of days <laughs> <laughs> i was held safe by the freedom beard uh, i didn't feel any cheek slap in there and on tia's comment about that safety uh yeah it's a traditional bolt action safety that's thumbable usually when shooting from a bench bolt rifles you don't mess too much with that because well you're either actions closed and you're about to take a shot or the action is open and you're not shooting the reason why it was so handy on this thing is this has an impeccable trigger that has pretty much no pre-travel pretty much no over travel i mean obviously there's some that can be measured somehow but the trigger is just there and stiff and when you hit I think we gauged it at about two and a half pounds it breaks that that's all there is to it it's just it's not even not even a button it's, it's almost, almost like a go sensor yeah no travel at all just uh press and bang <laughs> but what a, a sweet sweet rifle very fun to shoot uh incredibly manageable recoil i think that break probably has something to do with it that thing is beefy uh, we also have an excellent butt pad on the end so all that throwing out like i said this uh this nozzle load that we're shooting these 185 grains has about the same energy at 600 yards as a 12 gauge slug does at 10 yards um, that is they're like that big <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for scale <laughs> that's around in tia's hand <laughs> not uh not a high round count kind of caliber or cartridge which is a good thing because carrying a bunch of those would be challenging anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this uh sort of ride along and look for the full article with all the details and more accuracy testing etc coming in a future issue of tactical life magazine thanks for watching